on the agenda. Are there any changes or additions, Eric? Yes, please. Uh, under the Copley Trust meeting, we're going to delete the request for additional funding for the Senior Center project. Okay. And if you would, under new business, add uh, a cell police card and a low mail. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's uh, do the Copley Trust meeting. First on the agenda of it, Copley's Hospital's request for funds. Do you want to talk about that, or do we uh, have someone here to represent that? Are you Trish? Welcome. Do you want to come up here? We, we've got. Well, she can speak loud, but we usually have someone come right up front here. You can put a chair there, or you can stand, or whatever you feel like. Okay, it's, it's totally up to you. Um, well, thanks everyone for um, inviting me here to talk about Copley. Um, we have uh, submitted a request for a grant for $30,000 from the um, Alexander Hamilton Copley Trust Fund um, for our MRI project, which I can report today we officially broke ground. So it is, it is happening. Um, it's funding from Union Bank and um, what what I've been charged with them the vice president for uh, development and marketing at Copley Hospital. And um, we've been charged with raising a million dollars of the um, of the $6 million dollar project. Um, our goal is to um, to purchase a new uh, state of the art MRI machine. Um, that will be put into its own um, thousand square foot suite and um, will be uh, much better for our patients and for our um, caregivers, healthcare workers as well. It's conveniently located near the um, emergency room, which is often when the um, MRI is needed. Um, it will uh, currently, I don't know if any of you have had the pleasure of having to have an MRI over at Copley, um, but it's in a temporary um, place. The MRI itself is um, rather um, small and claustrophobic. So this new machine will provide ample space, um, and the request specifically is for some ambient um, lighting and um, mood enhancing, I guess is the way I would say it. Um, Equipment, which is separate from the actual MRI, and um, the, the goal of that equipment really is to um, help ease the stress and and, um, and the claustrophobic uh, component. It will um, you can dial the, the equipment to have um, you know different scenery, um, music, mood lighting, um, and basically, um, I think you know would reduce the need for sedation for children, for example, uh, as well as, I think, just makes for a much more pleasant experience when, um, when you have to go through something like that. Um, the, what else can I tell you? Um, does everyone know Copley Hospital and you still need to go into any details on 25 bed acute care, hospital providing services in Ohio County and beyond? Um, we have, um, I think, in your packet, um, you have information for the project. You've got some um, architecture uh, drawings and layouts, and um, we actually have a groundbreaking celebration um, uh, on Wednesday, which you are invited to if you'd like to come at 10 a.m. on the ground. Uh, so our construction began today, so we're relatively late, but we're still anticipating the. The project will be complete um, before the end of the year, so probably in the next week or so. Um, it will be open and ready for um, our first patient. Um, what else can I tell you? Does anyone have a question specifically related to the request? Where's the building going? So the building is going, um, if you're riding down Washington Highway towards um, Cemetery. On the left-hand side, where you see the copper sign, there's um, there's our health center building, and then there's the, the hospital. And there's a little area in there called the link, and it's going to be going attached right to that link. Um, so you can 
you know, pull right in, they'll be parking right there. So you can pull we, right in. You still got all the way around the access from fire. Yeah. 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 We're actually building it um, close to the, um, close enough to the hospital where we're not affecting any of the, um, the parking lot. Um, so it'll be a separate building? It'll be a separate building, but attached, if you will. Uh, can you tell me in what way other towns in Loyal County are contributing to funding for this project? Other towns in the Loyal County? Or other towns in general. I mean, we're here in Morristown, we're asking Morristown for $30,000, right. which is a lot. Yep. Um, and yeah. And I'm just wondering, you know, what, what would still be contributing to something of this project or High Park or, or Johnston, those towns? That's a really good question. Um, I don't have an answer to that, but I can. I can because I think I'm going to say this isn't a contribution from this town. A contribution from Mr. Cox's okay. trust fund. Okay. And I would hope that another town had a trust fund would be there asking. We would probably right. you know, when we'll be asking, you know, okay. we, we are um, asking individuals, you know, in our in our service area. Okay. It's just a select board is somehow select board and Gloria and I are the trustees of the Alexander Hamilton. That's a good question, though. A lot of people. Yeah. 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 But you're right. And like Dick says, if uh, there was other towns that had something like that, right. I'm sure they would be approached. Well, there are other towns that we should have it on. Yeah. And I will be looking tomorrow when I get to work to make sure there, you know, in, just in case there is a, uh, there are other, you know, other towns that need to I just have a quick question. Um, from reading the, the um, information you provided us, um, it said that um, you would be saving money and in in a, um, in that um, you would reduce the rate of having to have like do do overs on MRIs and um, or <clears throat> miss, um, like misreads or you know, that sort of thing. Do you have any data just for the yeah. record about that? Or? That's absolutely correct. Um, I don't have data regarding, you know, how many it would be, but I can mm -hmm. tell you with the, the current MRI that we have, um, the, the, the rate of redos is probably around 60 to 65%. It's really not, um, the, you know, the MRI is, is a little bit yeah. old and um, it's not doing the sharp, you know, we're not getting the sharp images. I think it's mm -hmm. one of the, um, Biggest consideration for us is that a lot of the um, uh, community who need MRI are going elsewhere for them um, for two reasons. One, it's, it's, it's just not convenient, and that trailer is really unfriendly, and the, um, like I said, the MRI is very, very small. Um, so to have to go back and redo when someone mm -hmm. doesn't want to do it in the first place is just really um, not great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so the MRI we bought is a Siemens, um, I'm going to the exact word, Magnetron um, Sola. And it is, it is, it's got the word Tesla in it, so I know it's a really good model. Um, <laughs> 1.5 Tesla MRI, which is a biomatrix technology. It is the state of the art, it is the, the, the cream of the file um, up there. And the, the cost of that independently is, um, let me say, yeah, $1.3 and the cost for the construction is $1.95 million. And again, this particular component of the MRI and the separate purchase would be the, the $35 million for the LED lighting. I have questions. Does this, if you want to as you help me, does this fit the protocol for this? Because we're not supposed to mix funds, right? That's right, but um, it appears to be anyway that this is a separate entity from the MRI. That's what I want to do. Yeah. And the other thing is to benefit the village. It's supposed to benefit the town. Okay. Yeah, I've got, I've got it right here for a lot of the folks that maybe yeah. maybe don't know the criteria. It's a very specific criteria that Alexander Hamilton Copley Fund has, and I'll, I'll read it real quickly. Dick, Dick probably knows it by heart, but um, 
used for creating works of public utility and beauty for the use and enjoyment of the inhabitants of the village of Morrisville in the town of Morristown, confined to localities within the area of said village or, or to purposes specifically benefiting its residents. No part shall be used for religious, political, educational, or any purpose which is, is the duty of the village or the town to provide. No part of income shall be mingled with other funds or applied to joint undertakings, but that each work establishes shall be separate and distinct. So. Is that the codicil? What's that? The codicil at the end of the This is just the part I have. All right. <clears throat> Given the opinion of the trustees appointed to manage the trust created under paragraph 11 of the will or majority of them, Coffee House 11 South Bay, located in the city of Marshall, may at any time be in need of assistance beyond the provisions of the 15th floor, and shown by me to be adequate, they are hereby authorized to use such portion of the funds for that purpose. So that answers my question because <laughs> I think it's a great thing. I did when I read it. Oh, yeah. And uh, I've been in one of the. And, We've been <laughs> we, we have to be careful of how we. It's a great source, though. And I just wanted to make sure that it was. Yeah. I moved after you the project. I have okay. a motion and a second by Gloria. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. Not write the right. Do you want to explain that, Dick? Do we have to wait 90 days? We have to come back. We'll be thinking about it all that time. I will. <laughs> 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 yeah. Absolutely. So come back and we'll have a discussion about that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah.
good idea. What do you mean by do the clock? Set the clock? You wind it. You have oh, to wind it. Cool. Yeah, it's these old, old movements. Yeah. All wooden gears and everything. And yeah. Go ahead, Danny. Yeah, whoever does look at it, Dave does all the woodwork. So he needs to be built, he builds it. Right. Exactly the what's there. He's really good at woodworking. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff up there that he's built that you can't buy it. No. And you can't tell that it's new. Yeah. He's yeah. offered to take it out of so. Cool. Ruth, go ahead. Uh, I'm curious, like, uh, I don't know if he has an apprentice. He he, he has had off and on, but okay. not not for that job. Yeah. yeah, he's a pretty remarkable woodworker. <clears throat> so the dedication that's taken to to do that all these years and just hiking up there is quite a quite a feat. Say nothing about winding it. <laughs> but, uh, Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know how many thousands of dollars in that. Yeah. All redone. Yeah. yeah. That was all renovated quite a few years ago now. New copper, copper roof and everything. And a new, new parts of the clock, some of the movement. Well, when you start to stabilize it, right. And trying to contact. Yeah, I remember when the construction happened, they found an old wooden mallet that was used to pound the, you know, the wooden dowels in and everything. And I guess they still got it. I don't know. I don't know if David's got it or what, but when it was built, it's pretty cool. All right. Thanks for the update, Gloria. Do we have anything else? Are we? Is there any copies? I didn't see the minutes in. We didn't have we don't have minutes on the prior one, but you're right. We should. Yeah. Yeah, we can do two. So we have a motion to adjourn Copley Trust. Do I have a second? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Yeah, that's great. I'd love to see it. I'm going to be gone. I'm going to Tokyo here tomorrow, but I. When I get back, maybe I'll put it over the next one. Right. Yeah, because that sounds great. I saw it before. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for joining us. All right, we'll move into the regular select board meeting. Uh, first, to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion to approve by Brian, second by Gary. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Next, we have community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Jamie? I have some. Oh, oh sorry. Jamie, Jamie Mr. first, then I'll, then I'll call. Okay. Uh, go ahead, sir. Okay, hey guys, my name's Matt Lindemer. Um, I just wanted to bring up um, again, I believe I spoke to you in March about um, getting the town to vote on recreational uh, cannabis dispensaries and licenses in the town of Morrisville. Um, so I did get a petition going for that, um, a handwritten petition, and we're a little over halfway there, not from lack of community interest, just from I've just been so busy and have not been able to get out there as much as I'd like. Um, so there is a lot of interest on the subject, I know, and I do have a lot of handwritten signatures. I'm starting to get to the point where um, there's a lot of pressure coming in to find location. It's hard to talk anybody into doing that um, somewhere that hasn't opted in yet. So basically I'm, I'd want to propose a couple of things, possibilities maybe to um, get this on. Well, one thing either I spoke with Dave Yakovone today who suggested if you do have a special ballot for the ATV thing, it wouldn't be a bad idea to include it on that. Um, I don't think you'd be catching a lot of people off guard, and I think it would be a great way to uh, find out what, uh, where the town stands on it so we have more time to get everything set up, how 
everybody wants it zoning wise and just make sure everybody is happy with the situation. The more time we have until October 1st, 2022, just the better and smoother it's gonna be for all parties involved if this is something that the town wishes to do. Um, I think my second proposal, We lost you for a second. You're muted. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can now. Oh, okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, I think my second um, proposal, I guess, aside from trying to put it on the ATV ballot, would maybe I suggest that we go to an online petition just because of the times. And I just think, you know, they did it with the ATV thing. I just think it would be a lot quicker and easier to get the result I'm looking for at least, and I think it would. I think it's a safe and clear result that you guys have used in the past to get petitions. So I'm suggesting those two things to try to get this um, on the ballot before March of next year to help us set up and plan in time. Um, I spoke with Todd, or I didn't speak with Todd. I was emailing with Todd today, who is basically, you know, won't talk about any zoning things, rightfully so, um, until the town has even decided if they're going to do this. Um, so that's kind of what I'm bringing to the table tonight. Okay. Um, do you want to coordinate with Eric about this? We can, um, we can figure out the best way to go forward. I know some of the communities have already posed the question in their town meetings. It would not be very difficult to find the verbiage they use. Um, they think it's standardized for OCT sent out suggested verbiage. I have all the verbiage and if you guys need any other information, like I'm more than happy to do value propositions or like I've, I've written up reports already. I can give you the numbers on, you know, Vermont's perspective numbers and just all the pros and cons that are involved in this. Um, if anybody is interested in any more information, I'm more than willing to provide. I work with Tim and Andrew with Vermont Cannabis Solutions and those guys just have all the info on what's going on in Vermont right now up to date. I have, I have Michelle's contact information tied for the email to me. So I have, I have your email uh, information. Okay. It's nice to get a report from it, though. If you want to yeah. coordinate with Eric, we can okay. um, try to figure it out. I'm not, I'm not opposed to, to maybe have it go on the same ballot with the ATV vote. We don't, we don't currently know when that's going to be yet. Yeah. As well as the school, school possible vote also, but, um, that could be a possibility. I'm I'm almost thinking it might be September or something like that. Or yeah, yep. so, yeah, really, guys. That would I just think it would make it uh, easier for for everybody to because um, you know there is some commercial space available now, but it is kind of dwindling, which is good. I'm glad it's getting bought up. Um, but you know, talk about where this would be optimal to really uh, you know boost business and people in the town in general. Um, so I can definitely get that report to you. So is uh, Eric's out, I guess, I'm assuming. Is that correct? Eric's right here. Oh, okay. You can't see him. He's right here. No, that's okay. I can only, I, it's like I'm on my phone, so I can't, I can't hear all that well either. But um, yeah, whatever you want me to do to kind of help push this in the right direction, I'm more than happy to do. Okay, great. You two can get in touch and then I'll, send and I'll reply to the email tomorrow with my contact. Okay. Does that sound Great. good, Matt? Yeah, that does sound good. I appreciate the time, everybody. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie. Okay. Everybody's favorite topic, but it's not about pros and cons. Okay. okay. Uh, so a couple of thoughts on um, uh, the ATV topic and uh, the vote and how that's going to work. Um, it would seem to me uh, that, from what I heard, there are a number of people who feel as though this may not be the only time this comes up. That, okay, these roads, but then out down the road, we might want to have these roads opened up as well. Um, I'm wondering uh, if there is some thought or any advantage to having a town-wide policy for all roads, and maybe that might be a better way to address this as opposed to piecemealing the roads. Um, it would eliminate whatever the cost is down the road for having to have additional boats. I'm sure boats, when you put something on the boat, it costs money to put it together and it's people and you're to roll paper and so on and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm just throwing it out there that it may be better to put up a boat for all roads um, because I think we'll be back. Um, that being said, I think that 
town, excuse me, the town, the select board has said they don't want to touch this issue from a uh, voting standpoint uh, from their side or want to put it forward to the town, which I think sets a precedence, which means anytime this comes up in the future, again, it will need to go back to the town. That you have said you don't necessarily want, and I think that, that I think there's precedence there. You can agree or not, but that's where that's my view. Um, and as far as the timing of it, um, trying to maximize uh, the money that it puts together, you got to put together to have a vote to get the most people into the ballot booth. Um, you know, is this a voting year? Do you vote in November or not? It's not. It's not. So we have no vote in November. Right. So the next time we vote in the town would be town meeting day. Right. Okay. Uh, because I would say, you know, the best the best we can do is combine it with the supervisory union vote. I think that's the best thing to do. Um, I don't see the value of having two separate votes, um, specifically because I don't think that there is any rush or any time constraint to get the ATV thing approved. Um, I mean, if it doesn't happen until October, it's the end of the season anyway. Um, so I think to, to try and get the most bang for a buck and get the most people into the ballot booth, although I'm not sure that there's going to be a lot of people voting on the supervisor union because nobody understands it. Right. Um, and there may not be a vote, so I understand. Yeah. You know, well, I don't even know what it means, and so I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of people coming out for that. Right. So. You know, if you push it off until October, if you can, if you can push the supervisor union vote off until October, you're going to get the most people voting on the issue and having the most input on the measure. Yeah, we're taking all those things into consideration. Eric and I have had several conversations about it. And so those, those are my thoughts on this issue, and I'm not here to weigh the pros and cons because everybody yeah. knows I'm sure how I feel and everybody was at that yeah. meeting. No, it's good to bring it up. Cons, so. A lot of folks are have almost the same same sentiment yeah. they're calling me and telling me I've, I've had several conversations with Sarah Haskins about it mm -hmm. and she's not opposed to having having an elect a, uh, a vote just for the ATVs if we have to right. um, it's about twelve hundred dollars it, it's a lot of work for them but she's right. willing to do it yeah. she's still not sure there will be a, a school vote you know that's how right. if it still kind of is um, if it is down the road I think if we could pair the things together or we may even have another a potential vote too, but I, I agree with you. I think it'd be nice to couple those issues. More you can get done, more people. Can yeah, I'm yeah. grinning because you're stealing some of my thunder. I am terribly sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I had this discussion with Sarah before she went on vacation, uh, and exactly many of the reasons James already stated about timing the vote. In addition to August is typically our heavy vacation month for our staff, so we're down on staff. Uh, September is the month that they extend doing the tax bills. Uh, they are pretty much full and out straight through the whole month of September. October, uh, later in the month, would probably be the, the earliest Sarah thought would work for a date. And then she said, if we're going to do it at late in October, everybody likens the first Tuesday in November to a witch. So the board may want to consider for maximum participation that we have a big and again it's, there's there is no time sensitivity on the issue of ATVs. The season will likely be over before the vote happens. Uh, so that that was Sarah's feeling on that. That sounds reasonable. And what about the potential of a vote for just a town wide policy as opposed to piecemeal? Because I am afraid that we're gonna come yeah, back that we don't know. Year I mean after year after year. I speak to the club quite a bit, and I've spoken to the president of Vasa, and, and um, I think their approach is if they could just get the north end open, they may be just happy with that. They're realizing now they probably just should have asked for that. But they also have said, well, maybe in a few years down the road, if people get used to seeing them, there might be. And I'm not so sure that it wouldn't be something that we would vote on if, um, you know, because we have the authority to do it. Sure. And, and to not have that be a precedent thing. Um, I think if it's accepted and there's not too much opposition, we might vote to extend the boundaries or something. You know, I, that's just me saying. I don't, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I've talked to the club quite a bit. But I think they, in their mind, they really don't want to ride on the roads. I know everyone's heard this, but they just want access, access to part of the town for the resources, not, not to ride all over the place. 
And yeah, I know. I, I, I'm not looking to drag this down there. Right. I'm not right. Looking. But that, that's my take on it anyway. I don't know if anyone has anything else to add. But the only other conversation that I've had reference to whether it's a precedent setting mm -hmm. piece is that it does not necessarily set precedents for your behaviors down the road. In the event there was a, a uh, vote in a positive to allow the loan, if you if the wording of the article was specific to the road that you requested, and there was a positive vote for that. A request down the road for the opening of another road, that again the, the board has the authority to open it by by uh, statute. I would I would survive that the board having been through what they've been through. Uh, would likely look at the approval process. Um, maybe maybe differently than um, the initial look at it last fall. Uh, you know, as trial basis, right. I, I I would think uh, my suggestion might be to the town to the select board that you notify the residents along the requested road right. and have a, a special meeting along that line, not necessarily a, a community form down there, but it would depend on the request itself. Right. But I mean, there's a lot of ifs. In what I'm saying because mm -hmm. it all really hinges on whether or not there's an affirmative vote uh, when the issue comes up for the ballot. Yeah. I understand James, uh, to his point, just doing it blanket across all the roads. I would I would suggest that you ponder that only because you have statutory authority to open roads. Right. By doing that vote, you're taking away your abilities. And if time you limit your your statutory authority, I, I would that's why we're here. You want to, you want to consider that. Yeah. And it, it's interesting, too. I was in New Hampshire the, over the weekend, and I was talking to some people from Vermont that have uh, a lot of conversations going on at the state level about ATVs. And there is a movement to legalize ATVs on all roads in Vermont. And towns can say yes or no individually. But I heard that could happen as early as next year. It also gives us the advantage this summer. Time to put everybody in, I suppose, to see how the experiment in Johnson is. Yeah. So, right. That would be all over the air rather than actually seeing Johnson. That's the only one to be close. Yeah, Johnson just just made it legal on Route 15. From Louisville to Maplefield. It's yeah. now open to AT traffic. AOT yeah. drop off. AOT. Yeah. yeah. On a trial basis, they're going to watch and see how it goes this summer. Yeah. But there's a bunch of other roads that it, it came from that. And that's, um, that would be something that would get people on the. On the <laughs> attending the meetings because uh, then each town can decide whether or not they're going to allow or not allow it. But that was interesting. Anyone have any comments about it? No? I um <clears throat> I think it is interesting to consider um you know what happens when um you do get a verdict from the town on the H C issue and um. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a lot of deliberation around how these things worded. Um, but my my concern is just leaving it open ended enough that if it if it if it's difficult, like if it's approved, and then we find like enforcement is difficult or um, people like aren't really happy with it, that we have a recourse, you know, that's not onerous. And you I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. You do. You know? The it's ordinance not. will be uh, drafted by the if again our people for us will. An ordinance will be drafted to dictate and govern the behaviors and requirements of ATV operators mm -hmm. on our streets. Specific, yeah. Specific. Uh, and some of them are more specific than others. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that I researched, Newport, had the best and most mm -hmm. specific. Yeah. Uh, that ordinance is yours. And right. you can rescind the ordinance at any time. Mm -hmm. But you have the authority to, to end it <coughs> if you feel things are out of control or mm -hmm. massive, what, whatever the case may be. Whatever it is. But it is your ordinance. All right. Is that how does that sound, Jamie? That's a super productive conversation. No, but I appreciate all all your um, input because uh, we that, these are things that we're talking about too. Yeah, great. That's good. Yeah. Is there any other community concerns tonight? Hearing none. We'll go to. Do we have any liquor control tonight? I don't think we do, right? All right, new business. Number one, discuss on Park Street Sidewalk by resident Pat Michelson. Let me do that. Hi, this is Brad. 
And Ruth Brown. And Ruth Brown. Ruth. I knew you lived on there, but I didn't know you were here tonight because of that. Ladies, if you would please, yeah, yeah. come on up and get you a little closer to the microphone. Okay. So, um, uh, I live at uh, 236 Park Street and the path is 250 Park Street at the, on the end. Um, All right. The sidewalk uh, was removed two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, finally, uh, it's been crumbling for years. Um, it hasn't been filed for at least the last two to three winters right. um, because it's just it was just rock and it's too hard on the machine. Yeah, it's, so, um, uh, was told at that point once it came up, we found out that it's not being replaced. Um, Eric came out and chatted with us. Uh, um, Busy Monday morning on uh, Route 15A, which is Park Street. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of traffic uh, that comes down there. Um, apparently, the solution has been take up the sidewalk, uh, put down grass, um, and not replace the sidewalk. And we're here to say we really like that sidewalk. We don't like that idea. idea. <laughs> um, there's several concerns. Um, it's a very busy street. Um, there is a sidewalk on the other side that goes to, um, um, I don't know if it's left or right, I don't know how, east or west, I don't know how you yeah. describe it. Oh, west, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the other sidewalk is compliant, ADA compliant. Um, we get a lot of people using that now to the rail trail um, crossing the town. Um, we live on the other side. It's a, it's First, very difficult to cross that street. Um, my driveway is not um, uh, directly across another driveway. So if, uh, my kids are older now, but if there were younger kids, um, it would be difficult, especially in the winter, to get across our, that street to get to the other side of um, the right window. Uh, you can't ignore the fact that there's snow on the ground half of the year. And there's no shoulder. Don't remind us. <laughs> <laughs> Please, we're even getting started on the snow, okay? So they're just it's dangerous. And at the end of the street, I'm sure you're aware that there's a mosaic school. And if you don't know about them, I'd be glad to tell you. Um, I've worked with kids, I'm a therapist, licensed mental social worker, and kids who have this kind of disability, they don't follow instructions really well. And they have a hard time concentrating and taking the sidewalk away from them. They don't have a crosswalk. They have to walk in the grass. I did ask uh, specifically if they received any services from the school because that's what the website said. And on occasion, they do walk to the school. So in the snow and traffic, there's, there's, there's no way out. And for myself, um, I have a letter from my physical therapist. I can't prepare. <laughs> my driveway does line up a little across the street. However, I can go down the hill. The driveway, I don't know if you're familiar with the house, it's the big white house with Warren's in, and the driveway does. So if I go down it in the winter, it's going to be snow and ice. Otherwise, then you're asking me to walk in the street two houses down to get to it too. A driveway where it lines up, and I need a flat work walking surface, and I have nerve damage, and my one leg is actually thinner than the other, and uh, it's worse than the physical therapy. You know, we, I don't know if Eric has probably already told you this. We, the reason we decided or, or kind of said, well, we have sidewalk on one side. And we hadn't heard any reason to not to disagree yeah. on that. Never, never, never. Yeah, no, we didn't. We didn't ask anybody. We this is something we didn't. We had other. Even said it was a thought in the wind. I mean, two or three years ago, maybe even more than that. My sewer line. It was a leak in the street, and so the leak was on the water company side, and as a result, I ended up replacing the sewer line. So it didn't blow in my face because <laughs> they said the whole street's bad. So at the time, they put two sidewalks in. I called several, like probably every year, to stand the environment. And he 
and he just never did anything. I mean, you, yeah. you guys don't understand. Our side of the street, when the snow's high, no, and I'm not trashing, let's be careful here, I'm not trashing the, the street people. They do what they're told to do. We have to beg to have snow banks do it because you can't even see to get out of the driveway in the winter, yeah. let alone get out in the street and walk. And if you had published that you were considering this, we would have come and told you. And the senior center money that you're giving them to, I'm a senior citizen. I can't get down here. What I was saying is we have other areas of the town where we've been able to do away with it and it hasn't caused a problem. This doesn't seem to be the case of parking. Right. This, so. this, I would really like to see a sidewalk like this. One of the reasons we purchased that whole architect the house in 2005, uh, we had three kids on the school system. It was really important that they be able to walk, basically walk home from school. You know, kids when we got them up there, uh, they walked on their own. But to have them be able to come home on their own, um, and just come down the hill and walk on the sidewalk to get home. Uh, it was really important. And during the winter, the last year that my, um, the two years that the, uh, they weren't plowing it, um, I used to dig a path for my daughter to get to the, you know, down the street so that she could walk on that side and yeah. walk home again. So um, yeah. uh, it, 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 it feels like a, a property value, you know, that, that's an important selling point for our house. And you know, like just from a from a resident, I pay taxes for everybody else's sidewalk. And I've been told you're pulling damage here. Oh, we're gonna do it. I was told years ago by the town crew that we had the worst sidewalk in town. <laughs> right. And you and you continued at the risk of my sounding really angry mm -hmm. to pave everywhere but our street. And then for two years you weren't compliant with your own town rules about keeping a safe walking surface. It was COVID. I really believed that this was the year. Yeah. And when I woke up at 7.30 in the morning to listen to my sidewalk be pulled up, I was not happy. I got it. I got it. Does anyone else have any input you want to chime in on, Gary or Eric? No, I, I went up there. I looked it over uh, the other day driving by, and then I went up and physically went to the site today. And... Uh, of course, it would always be nice to have a sidewalk in front of your house. It would be nice to have one in front of mine, but I have to cross the street. Um, I agree that the, across the street is not ADA compliant for across from your house to get down to the sidewalk. No, That's I, why I'm asking. And, I, and I'm not, not going to walk in the winter and and just getting hit with the park. When Eric was there, he can tell you you had the blinking light at 25 miles an hour. And the construction people, which you agree with the work, barreling up the hill. I mean, we the reason I hollered at people slow down and we get the out the window, you know. And it, so I'm, I'm asking you to please do this. And I'm also telling you not to go away. Any any other comments, Brian? Yes. Unfortunately, Park Street is is 15A. Right. Yeah, and it's a shortcut, and that's the problem. And it's the only other street in town that really matches that. And then there's 12. Where are the other uh, sidewalks that you have taken up in progress? Congress Street. Have you done it yet? We've done Congress Street, yeah. We, we were going to do Elmore Street, too. Yeah, we, that's we, right. We, we, all of Elmore Street? One side. One side. Yeah. Yeah, I, was told, I was told you didn't, but when I asked them, then you guys to get it to me. Now, how would it be if we did? Of course, we've already done the other side, but uh -huh. if we put it on your side and took up the other one, exactly. then you have the other neighbors coming in. That's from the other side that it's the same problem that I have, and at the end of the street, the school has. And honestly, guys, you could have applied for a grant. I know for a fact that you've got a grant because of the people at the staff building and the apartment. At least that's what I was told. Yeah. But that was the only reason that the other side was replaced. So there's a little history yeah. from Trisha today on um, that sidewalk. So when it was replaced, it was on a 100% grant from AOT. AOT did all the work. Our guys, our staff were not involved at all. Yeah. Um, it was put in <coughs> seven or eight years ago is what uh, her, her memory was. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, right. the project, the plan for the project was when that one was complete, 
that the one on the other side of the street would be taken off. That piece was never followed through with. Um, so they, because it was a 100% grant, with no matching funds from the town, she said there was there were hearings or there was a meeting uh, about it where everybody was, was notified, come in, and everybody on the side of the street was told, I'm going to fly, I'm passing that to John. I know you lived there for 13 years now, so I don't know if you recall that piece of work. We were never made aware of that. Yes. No. Yeah. Nobody ever, ever. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and I'm just. That's what we're trying to say. We would have been right. here a long yeah. time ago had we known. It was, at that time, we didn't follow the county follow through and take it up the sidewalk down. Of course, we've now done it. Mm -hmm. And replaced it. And so you're not ADA compliant and you failed to apply for the grant, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to say. Well, I'm not. The, the sidewalk is ADA compliant. It's just that driveway going down to the sidewalk. If you had to walk over that, I mean, which is not part of the sidewalk system. That's just a driveway going down there. The sidewalk itself on um, the. Yeah, we need to replace the sidewalk. I don't, I don't need to be disrespectful. We need a sidewalk. There might be kids that live on our side of the street, maybe not right now. And at the end of the street, you don't know if you have kids in wheelchairs. You don't know if you have kids who are sight impaired. And, and there's no way for them. And they use that that um, in front of our house over the, over the years. They've used that as a place to walk. They they, you know, they walk their, the kids. They walk the kids up and down. Just they don't have to cross the road. They just go up and down. Um, They're easier to monitor. Yeah. Quite honestly. So I don't know if any of you know anything about autism or any of those disabilities that have been in the letter. Sure. No, but they're just a call and I've worked with them and they will argue you to the ground, you know, and it's the nature of the diagnosis. When you have kids that are traumatized and they start to walk out and the car comes and somebody acts them back and traumatizing them again. And that's that's the bottom line. And I get to say that because I have left them and I have a license. Okay. Um, well, my sister worked with autistic kids for thirty three years in the school system, so yeah. No. So, but they're like yeah. yeah and and you know they can't help it the nature of the diagnosis is not that they're being difficult it's just, it is what it is and i'd be curious uh down the road so here uh for the select board of what um so it's a decision that you have, have to make and then it goes to the budget and then it has to be added to the next budget in town meetings so that would be the well, it's a matter of us uh, deciding we want to do it. It's totally up to us. And we can try to find the money somewhere to do it. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah. We can like right now, look. right now, I can walk and I feel fairly safe. You know, if Ruth doesn't have to tell me that, I don't get sick. But it really is that, that shoulders maybe this wide. Mm -hmm. It's not even, it's not, I don't even think it's a two feet. You know, it's unfortunate that it's part of the state highway, and it ends where the 40 mile an hour thing is, which is exactly the end of my property. I can understand, you know, your thoughts on it. If, if it was never a sidewalk on that side, then it would be a non-issue because right. people would say, "I bought the house, didn't have a sidewalk." I the house because I needed. I wanted to be in town. Yeah, I bought the house because I wanted to be in a town before I moved here. I mean, sure, two thousand. And I just for years I've helped to uh, do walk to school programs that we've done from the um, from the Grady building. We used to meet there, get all the kids off the bus, oh, yeah, and just yeah. show it. Just you know, really mm -hmm. discuss about walking to school. It's a great way to get some exercise, to get some fresh air. And kids loved it. It was a really good thing. So I'm just a proponent for yeah. sidewalks. And it was an article that might have been when it was written, Dan wrote it. About the walkability of Morrisville, and that everybody mm -hmm. should be able to walk. Mm -hmm. I have spoken to people. There's people on both sides of everything because I, I do know there's homeowners that where they've taken sidewalk up, they're happy because they don't want people walking by their house, I and they don't want their grass killed by salt, and they don't they don't want to have access. Yeah. So they're happy. So no, I, I know you guys aren't right. that way, but and I can see it on some properties or some right. some streets where. Um, uh, there's just not the um, traffic. traffic. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't care if there wasn't the traffic. Yeah. And then you put the grass in, and it's like gutting out. And guys, you need right. to go look. If you look, it was like probably the feet in front of some of the houses. Right. From the rain running off, it's just like told you. Right. And so it's sand. 
-hmm. And who's going to know it? And you're not going to give it back to us because right. it's your easement. Yeah. And they expect us to maintain it after this. And there's trust and everything in it so that if somebody falls and I'm liable, I don't think so. Right. Well, I don't know that we need to have a motion for this, but we can. What What do you think about it, Brian? Are you I'm kind of confused because one of the things happened was we decided to uh, we tried every year to get more and more sidewalks and make them better. So we decided that why do you need two sidewalks? I mean, there's towns that don't have any sidewalks. Okay, so we decided we talked it over. It was several meetings, and like I said, there was talk of taking up Elmore Street, you know, the short one. It took up Congress, and that one there is one of them. And it's that one, because as far as walking, I mean, is there a way we can put in a crosswalk with a sign so people can get across there and walk down the whole way? I can't get across. It's the hill, it's the incline. I can't do it. I have nerve damage in my leg. If you want the MRI, I think I might still have it. I mean, I gave you a report from my No, I don't need it. That I understand, and I, I, you know, that's not an issue. I'm just trying to think: is there, is there a way to make the sidewalk accessible for you across the road? No. If there isn't, well, maybe there really there. truly isn't. I mean, you have this much room, and now it's winter, and the snow is here, and it's way over the right line. So where would you have to walk? I mean, that's 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 our concern. Mm -hmm. How would you make that? How would you make that work? When honestly, I didn't want to get into this. When it snows and the banks are high, the other side of the street gets the snow removed. We are the orphan children. We do not get our snow removed. We have to beg for it. She's not responsible. But every time we've had to call Dan. And this has been an ongoing issue that Dan obviously never addressed to you guys at any meeting. And I and there's been several times. Well, Kevin, do you, you want to talk about this at all? What's your opinion on it? Well, I haven't, I'm the highway superintendent. Um, I don't, haven't heard any requests personally or anything come in, even through our website or any of our complaint uh, mechanisms. I've, uh, called, I've called every winter and said, hey guys, you removed it across the street. Could you come and do our side? We can't seem to be able to, seem to, be able to get out. And you come. And I've left my name in California. And I appreciate everything that you do. I don't. It's a, it's I mean, it's, it's, and, it's and, and the last three years that had the sidewalk hasn't been touched during the winter. No, no. neither has the neither has the high bank unless there's a phone call. After a rough street is that low. And, and you're saying the high bank to, to the top of your head? We, uh, haven't, had, we haven't had snow like that in the last two years. I I, I, just, I, I, I know there's an argument on both sides. Of okay, so let me explain to you. So. You know what it's 40 mile an hour time? I do. Okay, so the snow's pushed up to the top, almost to the top of that right here. Here's my trash can. Here's my trash, here's my trash, here's my trash can. Yep. And we shovel, and it's been up to here. No, I'm not exaggerating. There's no way to put the snow. So the banks get higher and higher and higher because we're shoveling to try and get out of, you know, to be able to navigate. You and everybody else in the town. Everybody else in the town has the snow removed when it gets too high. Well, I don't know about that. Those little issues, <coughs> perhaps, are probably. It's not the issue. The issue is the disability issue. It's the ADA issue. Brightest Light Pack's house is a pump station for water and light. And if you see it, the face of it kind of resembles like a vault from the senior cemetery. Right. It used um, to be. Sure. It used to be. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the state plows. Up through there when we plow, the snow does hit that and keep. So there's not a lot of shoulder. It does build up there. Um, so I think we're perhaps referring to is the visibility up the hill in particular, but not not to say that we would we really down the road uh, tough as well. I, I mean, we can certainly address that issue. You know, it's the visibility piece. You we, we have the ability to address that very easily. Yeah, the issue is. When the snow piles up and there's nowhere to walk. And, there's, and you can't ignore the fact, unless you choose to put the snow on the ground, just to put somebody here. And I. So you had mentioned um, that you know that there's grants out there. Um, 
So if like if what we decided to do um, would be to find the funds to build a new sidewalk, you're mm -hmm. saying you know a grant that we can apply to. I'm new at this, so I would just I'm asking I'm gonna you just to build a new sidewalk, yeah. Oh, I thought you just said that I know there's grants available that you can apply to. No, I want oh. it. It's a I want I I'm 75. I work part time. I understand. I understand table, that. And I want a sidewalk. I understand. I just I heard you say that. Loud and clear. No. I want a sidewalk. I know that it costs money, and I thought that you had said there are grants available that you can. Okay. There are grants. Okay, I mean, that's. I thought that you would research that. You didn't take advantage of it. Had you notified us, then you would have been able to apply for I wasn't aware we didn't notify the people who lived down the street that we were going to do away with it. I, my opinion is, and I remember when we decided to not do it, I've been here a long time, is that once you have a sidewalk, you've got to keep a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. That's been falling that's apart. That's my understanding. The decision was made, true. like Brian said, to do away with some, and it worked. We, we, you're the first people to come in to complain about not having a sidewalk. And there's lots of houses and that have been affected. that was the rule. Once yeah. it was there, you had to... No, there's no rule. We, okay. we can decide to do what we want. It's a show. But in my mind, my opinion is, well, once you build it, you maintain it. Right. And replace it when right. you need to. You know, it's a cost saving if we don't have to do it. But yet, in some ways, the maintenance end of it, we've, we're going out anyway. We can cross and come back the other way. Exactly. And, yeah. But there's costs involved in doing it and maintaining it. I'm not opposed to, to doing it. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. Uh, especially in your case, when there's uh, you know people with disabilities that live on the road and and the mosaic, all of that. I understand. I'm really worried it. about the mosaic. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. 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 yeah, the location. There's multiple right. factors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not the only factor. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So you need a, a new sidewalk from your house all the all way, way down, down the mosaic, and you need that. Yeah. Okay. All the way to the. My uh, my thoughts are we could, if in the budget season, look at it, find out how much it's going to cost. Because I think if we'd known what's happening now, you probably would still have your own rickety sidewalk because we, well, we don't have like enough money. Well, that's the old rickety sidewalk. Right. 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 And there's stuff left that helps me by shuffling, and there's always shuffle between my house and that house in case I ever right. had an emergency. But you need to change the change of desire, even if we start to do it, we may only like do half. Right. This year, half next year. Gary probably knows more than what we do about sidewalk. I'm thinking about an industrial park one there. Like about fifty thousand dollars to do something like that. And I think yeah, we like, need to find out how much it is. Yeah. And again, what do we have to do? Does it have to be a wide and mm -hmm. all the way? And well, I think if you want to do it, so our machine could take care of it. Do it by town and get fund. Yeah. Those town and get infrastructure fund once we get infrastructure done. Wow, well, we don't. <laughs> We, uh, I'm just throwing it out there. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jane Campbell here right here a while back saying, "Oh, well, here's this money, and so maybe come from broadband, but it could be used for right. something else." And Dan was like, "Oh, hey, we can do this. We can do sidewalk work." And I think he specifically said sidewalk. Right. There's a big gift for that. I know. But anyway, and it's just yeah. Yeah. thank you. And we have been talking about this for years. Seriously, yeah. the well, turn is coming. Budget season is coming. We're doing it. You know, we're gonna. Yeah. You you pick the perfect time to come in. Okay. We thank can. you. Can take a look at it, and uh, I'm not opposed to, to putting a new sidewalk out there. I don't know if uh, how the rest of the board feels, but we can take a look and see what it costs. I'm judging by the, the amount we put on uh, Industrial Park Drive, that, that was about 42000 or 47000 I'm guessing somewhere in that neighborhood, around 50000 I'm not an expert on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That was three, like four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. So, 650 feet. 650 yeah. feet. Yeah. So Kevin yeah. might know more than that. So then we can pick up that one down there. It would be a lot easier if you had a little snow. Like the pipe, the pipe has no issues. Where did you say they cut it out? That's right. Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, when is the budget um, information when you take uh, the process starts? <coughs> excuse me, the process starts late October and goes okay. through January. Final decision of the budget typically after the first of the year. We, we, uh, Go over the budget by department, okay. um, so that would uh, likely fall. I, I would have to take a look at maybe under the general fund for sidewalks. Probably. Um, 
I would argue that in terms of accessibility, I mean, sure, we're not seeing many people here on the screen tonight, but in terms of accessibility, um, people who have families, um, you know, people who are traveling, or people who have you know, a, a ability to, um, you know, to get around, it, it offers them a way to be part of the, um, the meeting. But, um, like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine if it's, Cheaper or diff on a different platform. I, I do think the Zoom is um, really user friendly, as you said. Um, but I think it is important to have a, a platform where people actually can participate and they're not just watching a rebroadcast. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I like the idea of, of scaling down even the free one, you know, you can do it up to 100 participants. But um, the, the free one will only allow you 40 minutes. <coughs> Well, the so the next you one up is the pro one or something. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that'll get me. Brian, you would be so, minor Gary, but Bob is the one that takes the piano 40 minutes right now. <laughs> so if I was a free one and then you go with a 40 minutes, Bob would say. Bob pays for it. But I think maybe the, you know, the next one up. We take a look. I, I just want to know that we want to continue, and now that I'm hearing this. Yeah. I think so. I like. Oh, I, I agree with Jeff some of the some of the concerns she has and. It's pretty handy for people to be able to attend if they want to. Like like Jeff said, there's not a lot of people tonight, but given the issues, it could be quite a few. Well, I, say, yeah. I mean, I'm going to join in January to do that and drive downhill. Right. right. And a lot of folks back. Right. Yeah. Kenny. The yeah. thing is, a lot of people are pretty brave on that. Yeah. That's they are. Not, you know, to me, I feel that strongly about the issue. I'd make my way here. But it's just like any kind of social media or anything else. That they're even on the street or not on the street, they like to talk. Right. But a lot of the ones I hear talk, I know for a fact, if they're here, they don't become six foot tall or bullet. <laughs> That's the <laughs> problem with the Zoom. Right. Well, I know, I understand that. But I mean, we, we also, with Zoom, we have control of mute people and you know, a lot better than that other platform we have, the go to <laughs> platform. And uh, I don't mind continuing it and maybe doing it, you know, the hybrid or some way. Or maybe there must be other uses for the town meeting. You know, <coughs> yeah. You must have meetings with other people out of town or? Uh, Honestly, no. Really? And I, and I pulled around here because I didn't want to go to the board and get a yank when everybody here. Hey, we might yeah. use it. So I checked with Todd, I checked with Sarah, I checked with the finance office, I checked with Tricia. And they all have the ability to join meetings. It's, it's setting the meeting up. Right. That is the person in control of that is the one that has to have so a no meeting. Yes. Have a host one. Like Correct. Right. Yeah, it's the hosting issue that goes. It causes us to have that flow. Right. And I, you know, I can see it being helpful if I'm on the other side of the world. Yeah. And, right. and we didn't have right. enough people here. You know, I could sign you're up. Saying you're going to be available once the time changes. I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 13 hours oh, right God. now. Oh, so, well, there are other options.
Well, I would just write in and uh, ask a few questions. Check the SimQuest. SimQuest doesn't provide any training or along those lines, but they have a sister company that uh, spur off from them uh, that actually does training, uh, offers software platforms and training for apps in this one private entity, you know, in, in this type of thing, like many, many others. You know, I've only just uh, made contact with them by email. I have a phone call with them tomorrow following this meeting so that uh, I can explore different options with them. Okay. Sounds good. But if we do it, I think we ought to stay with the Zoom platform. Yeah, I like Zoom. Mm -hmm. I like, like the way it works. And is it important to us that um, I know once you, um, there is part of what makes it um, cost extra is that um, the, the meetings are recorded, that there's a trans, like a, a trans, it's the audio transcript. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so that's what, that's why we can't use the free plan, is that right? That's right. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks, Eric. Next, uh, cell EQ. Richard. Um, I've been working in the fall, and since again, it's been really tough. Yeah, for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been off the road for a little while. Your hair is <coughs> Facebook site uh, a week ago, advertised it for one week for closed bids with a minimum bid of three thousand dollars. We had the advantage of knowing what the last Chevrolet had told us they would pay. Right. We set a minimum bid of three thousand uh, dollars. We had no response at all. So I think okay. the cutoff date was the cutoff time was today at noon. Okay. So people week to show their interest. Okay. So we can. <laughs> so with your permission, positive. Or a positive motion from uh, mm -hmm. Richard to deal with them directly to sell the car. So I hear a motion. I make a motion we sell a police 2014 Impala to Mont Valley Chevrolet for $3,000. I have a second. motion by Gary and a second by Brian. I would give more if you left the siren and lights on it. <laughs> no doubt, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> any further discussion? <laughs> Me as part of the motion to sign off. On the behalf of the that's, yeah, that's part no, of it's part of his motion. Yes. I don't want to take it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Richard. All right. Uh, the road name. Got it in front of us here. Adam and Amy Grant. Yeah. Uh, they are looking to do a television. Uh, property, which is across from the water lights, the one we have the trail floor we have, shows the water lights going across the road. We're going to put in a pair of duplexes in the back side of that building, which is already an apartment building. Right. And they are looking to name the road. A Lawati Lane? Yes. Yep. The private road. Yeah. That was the original owner. So I hear a motion regarding this. Motion. I'll second it. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Gary. Is there any further discussion? So what's, what's Red Barn? So it's an alternate. If the water is going to be in conflict with the natural water addressing system. Yeah. And, it, and it wasn't. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next. Next. Approve warrants. Motion I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion has passed. TA report. Eric. So I have not been here long enough to hear things and measure them out and now starting to take action. So my list is a little longer than a long time. So no, it is. Grab your popcorn. <laughs> uh, 
we got our paving bids back to bids uh, by the deadline for the roads that we had listed. Uh, we didn't fall out of our chairs, but the shop was pretty heavy. The cost of blacktop is not sustained. So uh, we had looked to do five roads in town. Uh, we have the uh, Washington Highway from basically the Crawford Hospital now to uh, Washington to Randolph Road. Uh, Boundary Street, S Street, Town Hill, where is the Third Parkway East. The bids came in a mile and a half away. Well, a mile and a half. Now there's some moves in there. We knew that was a cost. The costs were uh, well above our budgeted amount. So we are in the process of. Uh, Renewing or reviewing our priorities on those roads, and uh, I'm going to send out a second bid request to all the companies again, uh, reducing our our mileage. Uh, focus will probably be on Washington Highway, uh, road from pretty much from like the Congress Street intersection down to Randolph Road is chewed up badly, and uh, we're hearing it from not only our own animal service but some rescue others who use that road access. Uh, as well as Foundry Street, which is fairly well destroyed at this point uh, and needs to be repaved. Uh, and then we'll look at it from there if there's any money left. But right now we're thinking from the bids we received and what we uh, expect they may come back at with a lesser amount of tonnage, that we'd be right about our budget budgeted amount for those two streets. And that's to just reclaim the top part and two inches of sham or three inches of That's correct. It's, uh, it's actually the reclaiming is, is not a part of Washington Highway. Washington Highway is a shim and a, and a shim top. Okay. So we're going to go a one inch shim and a, and a one inch and a half top coat on that road. And then uh, Foundry Street was a two inch shim because of the shape of things. Yeah. Three and a half, one and a half inch. Right. You can turn that into gravel and kill it. But that was going to be my. Uh, would it make sense, Foundry Street? I've been in there a couple times. So, so just take the black top right up, put a base course and the top on it. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. I mean, by the time you get done, the uh, amount of work that's going to be needed to level it all out, it would be easier just to tear it up. I would think it would be easier to cut it right off there. Yeah, cut right off the road. And take the rest of the black top right out. And then you can grade the thing up and add a little bit of gravel to it and get it up. Is that is Foundry Street um, right there behind RK Miles? It is. It's, yeah. it's, it's where between, it's between, it's between the building. New apartment units. Right, okay. okay. That's what I was going to say. There's no apartment, so who knows what they got to dig up. They do it. They've, all, they've made all of their attachments under our street already. Uh, all they all can actually yeah. been made. Yeah, we, yeah, we, uh, uh, we've been told that before Bridge Street. So. No. Just saying. Yeah. They haven't. Good point. Here. It's just if you, that's the tree you're going to do, maybe next year, if you get this stuff done. Right. Well, it sounds like just do the priority and come back to us. Yeah. So no, that's why we haven't done. We haven't come to you with this just yet. Right. And right late in the season, so we're up. We're going to have to do it right there. Um, Sarah posted today a survey, a survey uh, on our webpage. Um, it's a hazard mitigation survey. We're in the process of every five years uh, updating our hazard mitigation um, policy for the town uh, with the help of our, of our uh, consultant. And this uh, survey is one. And this survey is uh, is a part of that component, basically getting the, the public input. To go by virtue of a uh, of a survey, so she used SurveyMonkey uh, as a, a platform for that. It's online. We're going to continue to advertise it through our Facebook page, and uh, she did a, actually a write up about what the idea behind it is on our on our uh, our own page, our home page, and then uh, just continue to, to direct people in that way. <laughs> We're hoping that a couple of weeks would be enough time for people to chime in. So we can keep this uh, process moving forward and uh, get that completed. Uh, I have a first 
first meeting tomorrow with volunteers uh, within our staff for this building, working with them on uh, security, building security uh, and trainings as well. Uh, it's a, it's a, an ugly part of society that uh, these type of things happen and we do get folks in here at times who are disgruntled, uh, taxes and anything else. Um, we have pretty much no security for any of our staff as far as where we are in the building. The egresses are limited and hard to get to, so. Uh, I thought we were getting that when we hired you. The M wore lots of hats. I don't run as fast as I used to, but. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the application, I'll apply. <laughs> <laughs> so the staff, uh, the staff pretty excited about talking about building designs, uh, maybe some slight modifications to the building for the input plan we have now. Uh, to do service windows and then control access doors to the rear area. They need to go in for the record searches on the town court side of things. Okay. Um, but anyway, that starts tomorrow. Uh, and the financial office had several very lengthy uh, well, discussions would indicate a back and forth exchange. I've had some lengthy listening sessions uh, from Paula and Tina on we, we do not have a formal human resources section of our town government. We have 46 employees, full-time and, and uh, part-time full-time. I thought that's your hat, too. Well, it's not my hat, but I'm being allowed to wear it, so they're sharing. But Paula came from that. Uh, she was the head of an office, and she was the HR person for that. She had much familiarity with it. There is some training to go along with it. Uh, it's a build it as you go piece. They want to uh, implement some things now uh, and educate all our staff on that piece and the component of it. Um, and then eventually and slowly build it into our town policies such that they can help uh, not only with benefit issues or payroll issues, uh, but also with uh, the communication issues. If there's a disgruntled employee, rather than having them just tell, me, tell us, hey, I've applied at this place, I'm out of here find out why they're disgruntled, let's, let's not lose that institutional knowledge and uh, and have them who don't work in all the other departments be that neutral ear to listen to the problems that may be occurring. Uh, we want to set up, uh, there's lots of things to set up, reviews, uh, setting with the, the staff members and uh, letting them set their goals. Uh, it, you know, I don't have all the answers and there's too many of them for me to, to know who needs training on what. So this is really a piece that's been missing. Uh, and, uh, and <coughs> it's gonna take a while to get set up. It is, it is. and uh, they'll, they'll be reaching out to other areas that have this to, to see what their models look like. And, and uh, build it. it's gonna be a long slow process. There's currently uh, no money in our budget for software, uh, specifically for payroll software. I can tell you that Paul spends five hours every two weeks going through timesheets, paper, Timesheets and they are different. Highways are different than everybody else's, and it, it's uh, cumbersome. And it should be, in this day and age, uh, a couple of clicks of a mouse, some review, and, and then approve, and on we go. But uh, we're going to be looking at that. You may hear that come back. I'm planning that seed, as I like to say, that, mm -hmm. uh, that you may see that when we come to budget time, that you know, we can find software that suits our needs, and we may be looking to purchase that and implement that. The municipal parking lot, the uh, filtration system under the parking lot, um, that project is moving forward. The, uh, the gentleman over there whose name I consistently forget, so I wrote it on a sticky note on my desk, I didn't bring it in with me, uh, has uh, put the bids out. Yeah, if he sent them out, they will be, uh, the bids are due in no later than 3 o'clock on August 2nd for the construction to begin. Uh, no later, no earlier than September 1st. And our completion date is October 15th. Uh, so we're going to, I've already told our concerns about that late in the season finishing that for us to pave that parking lot because weather can really hamper it at that point. Um, so we're going to do a, a wait and see how, how this goes for this year. Uh, we'll see, let's get, we get this end of the ground, uh, get it completed. And we may simply patch over what they've done. Uh, I have 40 more pages or 56 page document to read, which is the bid process document that 
So the, our responsibility is in there. So uh, I'm not sure who is responsible for the painting back over the top of that project, where did they do the filling, or if that's part of our overall paving, repaving the whole parking lot. I agree that idea, but I'm getting that. Mm -hmm. um, so that that work is starting. Uh, best case scenario, we have our parking lot repaved and restriped this fall late. More likely would be that we would have it good enough for winter and then pave it in the spring. Okay, a couple quick questions. Sure. Is this the lot behind the post office? Yes, and my apologies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay, playing a little catch up now, please, yeah. and, and stop me when I do that. Yep. So, this, uh, we, with the dog park on Park Street, yep. they actually put one of these systems in the ground. It's yep. underneath there, it filters water coming out from Copley, uh, Copley Avenue from high school. Yep. It takes all the stormwater from that area and it goes through a filtration system. And then before it goes out into the stormwater drains. Okay. So the Act 64 that I told you about, as far as the side roads and whatnot, and the armory and the ditches, this is all part of that project. Uh, and a lot of grant money, this grant money comes from a different uh, place than that. But uh, we have no, other than just staying in communication, uh, this project is all being handled right from the get go, right to, to completion by this other entity. So. Okay. This one is going to have to help us as far as uh, the discharge out of the municipal parking lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, our plan is to use the grant money, as I explained about last meeting, uh, to work on the outlet pipes from our stormwater system on the Wild Rivers mm -hmm. and armoring those with approval from LCPC with Rob Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, because as soon as we armor those outlets, anything that any of those the storm drains that feed to that, all those streets become green on the end uh, in our so it, it was kind of a no-brainer, right. the money we have. We actually got an email today. They upped our grant amount, 25000 So the total of $30,000 for next year with our in-kind. Um, so we're going to be able to, hopefully, we're going to identify these storm drain outlets and, uh, and focus on armoring those uh, so that we have the largest impact. But arguably, the, the village in downtown is where the most of the pollutants would typically come from. Not so much the roadside ditches of the wall road. Uh, so, it, to me, it, the, the importance was to focus on the, the storm drain outlets to get those uh, built the way uh, they want to build and get them armored up and get our village at least turned green as far as our impact on mm -hmm. the Champlain district. Um, will that at all be impacted when um, the new parking goes in for the development on Kitchen Street? Or that'll well, and that is the, the, the new park. So oh, okay. the municipal parking lot back here, yep. the whole, this uh, the stormwater drain filtration system is the kind of a, the, the first shot. We get that done. Yep. And then we can repave the entire parking lot to include the thoroughfare that goes by the post office straight up to Pleasant Street. Yep. And then the restriping and the, the new directional flow through there allows us to increase our parking ability, which ties in with the, uh, well, as a partnership project on Hutchins. Okay, great. Um, one more thing. Sure. It would be really cool to get um, a simple um, cycle. I don't know if there's something that um, highway departments already use, like, um, you know, like in Burlington, like this drain, um, this drain, um, you know, this drain drains to Lake Champlain or something like that. Um, just to highlight that we're doing this green project and um, you know, it would be a positive PR piece for the town. Sure. No, I don't know. We can yeah. certainly do that this year when we finish on the Garfield yeah. Road and get that piece yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, we can get a snapshot of that right off the map. It'd be yeah. helpful to us, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and we'll do a quick press release on that to show where progress is on okay. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all I have. Diane, any more questions for Eric? <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Select board concerns. Gary. Um, I guess other than, well, the Park Street sidewalk, I had a question I asked Eric to check on it today is where the existing sidewalk was, I don't believe was even in the town right away. Um, back, I was trying to remember when the statute changed, but it was back when there was quite a lot of discussion about class four roads and 
uh, town, you know, people were trying to figure out where the class four roads were and if they were still open or whatever the case was. Yeah. Legislature um, decided to have an end date on that conversation and any roads that were in existence at that time were considered to be a three rod road with the three rod road right away yeah. with the road being in the center of that right away. Yeah, it's 42 feet, right? Three rods is 50, 49 and a half feet. It's a three rod road. I thought it's 14. 14. Yeah. I three rod road is 49. Yeah. I thought a rod was 14 feet. 16 and a half. Oh, 16. But, uh, because we ran into that over on Jersey Heights and that development, mm -hmm. the town requires 50 foot right away. And the existing road going in there was three rod. Mm -hmm. But we had to buy six inches more land to make right. it. That was really expensive, six inches of land. Right. But regardless, what I'm saying is that Park Street, without doing any more research, is I think is a three rod road. So in order, and if you go down through there, you'll look where the hydrants are placed. I believe those hydrants are placed on the edge of the right of way. And that existing sidewalk was quite a ways behind that. So if you end up doing a new sidewalk, it's going to have to be like the rest of them, right. right along the curb, right, and uh, in front of the hydrants. And well, it's all gone now anyway. So it'd be if it's built, doesn't matter if it's built closer to the road or where. We're right, at. but I'm saying if we do build it, yeah, we want it in. The, if we right. got a main, right we want it in the right of way, yeah. as opposed to building it where it was. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a matter of relocating where the sidewalk ran before, mm -hmm. that there's some obstruction. Yeah. So there, I'm going to continue to talk to Gary about the new solutions here. Yeah. Uh, we used to have a discussion today. My mind's been spinning on how to resolve this. The sidewalk itself is ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Pat doesn't question that. Right. Um, it's the access to the end of the sidewalk right. that's problematic. We didn't discuss perhaps concrete stairs with handrails. Yeah, but it's still, still, still not ADA compliant. Right. Okay, sure. Have a ranch. Sure. I, 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 I'm not sure that we can't find a solution, but it's going to take some creative thinking. Perhaps working with the building owner. Right. Yeah, and if you do for one. Right. Well, that's what it's all about. We can, we can investigate it and see what the precedent is that there was a sidewalk there. Agreed. You know, that's the precedent. And to me, too, the fact that it's near the schools, I mean, if it were a sidewalk, sidewalk anywhere else, I don't think it'd be as strong an argument. But right. Uh, it is kind of a high yeah. speed. Yeah, for sure. Even though it's 25 mile an hour. So. If, right, yeah, if you place a sidewalk cool. back where it was, we're going to have to do a lot of legal work. Yeah. Right. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, More to follow. That's why we need to get, if it's going to go back in, it would have to go in our right of way. Yeah. Save a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. Just, when you drive down through there, you might as well just look. Yeah. See where the sidewalk would be. Yeah. Run through there and see what obstructions exist. You're saying there's telephone poles and there's, there's, mm -hmm. there's some stuff. Yeah. Most stuff. I mean, mailboxes. You know, yeah, the stuff. mailboxes are fine. Right. Yeah. All right. Is that it, Gary? Yep. Are you sure? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Jeff. Um, I don't have any Brian? All set. I'm good too. My, my only concern is that it looked like I was going to miss a couple meetings, but my flight got changed, so I, I made this one, and then potentially I made it back, but <laughs> never know. I may be calling you at last minute. That's fine. I'm supposed to fly back on the first, but it might be the second, so. Well, well keep you posted. With the way things are going over there, I know. I was in there. We're gonna let you go. Uh, still not out. I just had my second COVID test today, negative test, mm -hmm. and a third one when I arrive. And they're still saying they may not let me in the country. That was one. I was saying they let him in, not let him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be the case. But I'll 
But I see they have one or two more Olympians come down with it. Yeah. US Olympians. Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. Tough call. Especially for the athletes who are training five years for it. Yeah. 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 All right. Next. Old business. Do we have any old business? We don't. We don't. I do. Oh. Denny. As a taxpayer. You're under other business. Yeah, this is old stuff. <laughs> this ain't as fire chief. I got a letter in the mail for a reassessment of my house. Mm -hmm. Nobody walked in. Who do I ask them just how they're doing this reassessment? The Lister's office. Huh? The Lister's office. Okay. I'll be there tomorrow. But I ain't happy. Are they going to be there tomorrow? I'm trying to remember. Jerry works, I think, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Wednesday for sure. Tuesday here. Uh, She's the your assessor. I didn't have a chance to ask you. This, this is not part of the, re the reappraisal. Is not done yet. Huh? This isn't part of the reappraisal. I'm not sure. Well, I got I'm something sure that says my house is worth X amount of money and overpaid $49. And it says something about an appraisal. And I don't know how anybody can appraise it when they haven't been in it. Give him a call. The, the Terry can very easily explain the process. Because this happens all the time uh, with the assessment. Yeah, process, so. it's more than more than me that this has happened to. Yep. Yep. So I just thought it was odd. I had a letter from her uh, two years ago just because of the status of my house. My daughter and son in law children were living with me for over a year. So they were renters. So it changed the status of my head of household status. To change. No, there's no change. No, no, I'm just saying there's things that there's value thing. Yep, there's, there, there are different reasons that things can tend to get higher. Terry is definitely the one to explain it to you. Yeah. She's and and they, def they don't always go in, you know, they don't uh, do an inspection. They like to, but they don't always do it. Well, they kind of have to if they reassess in the home. You tell us. In, tell in them Massachusetts, that. where you could have a dump outside, have a dump hall inside. Right. They never went in. Gotcha. I know uh, a few houses like that here. Quite a few. Yeah. So I just just was curious as a taxpayer on who I talked to. Yeah. So I'm I'll start with her. See what happens on Wednesday morning. Sounds good. Do we have any other business? Anyone got any words of wisdom? Bill. Um, the Lucas approved the last meeting that we've been received and it serves on the other truck. Great. Um, and uh, as of late last week, uh, we're going to be partnering with GDH and Waterbury Ambulance and the three uh, Wednesday night live events, uh, August 4th, 11th, and 18th, we'll be offering vaccine at those events. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Jess, I'm trying to make a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> In a second? Second. Thank you, Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Go pass. Thanks, everybody.